Jeez, it was quite blowy outside today. Hey, what is up everyone? I'm Joel here once again, and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Rayman Raving Rabbits 2 for the Nintendo Wii. So, last time we have managed to able to have some bit of good times in, uh, well, specifically we played some of these mini games in Journey Forms of USA, and also we did done the shooting range game, and also shown off some of these other mini games that we have not played, Journey Forms of the USA region. So today for this episode is the fact that we are about to be moving on to the next country of any sort by simply able to play even more mini games and that is, takes place in Europe such as for instance it could be either France, Germany or Italy or Greece I suppose or even the United Kingdom so anyway the first mini game we have on here is chess and basically we have to simply just win and all we have to do is basically we have to concentrate just like that. However, th to me though, this is one of the most lamest mini games I've ever played. Pro clearly it's because you might do nothing rather than just doing a lot of motion mashing or especially noticeable with any other stuff in mind. But either way though, it's just a coincidence most likely, which it might be something to do with the forms of some sort of like a rushed kind of stuff, which even then though, it might be seems the case, so... Yeah, oh no, it's just the fact that you have to simply just concentrate, and that's all you really have to do in this minigame, so... A bit like Luster in my opinion, especially because of all the fact that you do absolutely nothing at all. Which, I kinda wish there's more variety on them. So, as a result, yeah, this minigame is pretty lame. <laughs> But don't worry though, whenever we get onto the next selections of mini games in Europe, then it'll make it a little bit more better, so trust me on that one, so... Anyways, let's move on to the next mini game in terms of Europe selections of mini games, and this one appears to be... Oh, this one's a fun one, Burp. Blast the city with a burp. And basically, we have to shake the Wii mode up and down, and just trying to shake the bottle. And by the way, if you ever play it on normal mode, you have to simply press the A button to open up the bottle. And then afterwards, you have to simply just raise the Wii remote upside down to drink it. Think of like you probably drinking at something. So, because compared to the easy mode, it's the fact that obviously you just have to shake the Wii remote up and down. And that's all you really have to do. So, as far as normal mode is concerned, you have to do three multitude of uh, control types. So... But anyway, I think this usually takes place in, uh, I would say in Paris or something, which it might be seems the case, even though I haven't exactly looked upon that much, uh, European stuff, but either way, yeah, that's why I classify that. I think that could be a good one. Ah, oh, so close! I was 120 points off by getting a high score! Or somewhat more than that, actually, just because, well, if I somehow manage to able to just get into first place, but if I beat that certain score, then I would be able to actually classify for getting another new costume. But no, we actually get into second place, off by 120 points, which, for the record though, it was actually pretty dang close. It was so, so darn close. If only if I could potentially try to able to drink the bottle properly, but anyway, let's move on to the next mini game. Is bike race, and for this one, we need to reach for the first before well anything else can. So you have to steer the Wii remote left or right by simply holding the Wii remote sideways. And if you those if you ever played in two-player mode, basically the other uh, player of your team can able to do the pedaling for you. So. It kind of reminds me like a Mario Kart Double Dash vibe, except the fact that, well, rather than just racing in the entire, uh, full loop of the track, instead we have to just simply just race in the entire linear track. Yeah, nothing to be more precise, so either way though, and I think we start off with, uh, 30,000 points, so... And the more you, uh, travel further, then I'm pursuing your points will uh, decreases every time when you're able to, well, just simply just accelerate forward. So, 
Now, I suppose there's something worth mentioning for this point too, is the fact that you can also just manage to toss the actual, uh, some cans, as far as I'm aware, in order to able to actually just to let the, uh, these other two rapids get spin out. However, though, you have to dodge them most of the time, because otherwise, uh, you lose points if you manage to able to get hit by not only certain hazards, but also the actual, uh, opponents tossing the actual cans at you, so... Something's worth mentioning for this point, so, in or and again, in order to be able to get in first place on the actual high score count, uh, basically, you really can't afford to get hit by a lot of, you know, obstacles in between. But unfortunately, I did manage to get hit quite a few times, and as a result, I don't seem to be able to get that, so... Burkonina, which, I do apologize for that pronunciation error for this point, folks. Twist the Wii Remote to steer yourself left and right to keep your sandwich balance. And similarly is the fact that we can able to actually just to tilt it up and down as well. And then if we move on to the next page, well if we managed able to actually skip this part because I already explained this before. Uh, hold the A button to keep the sandwich steady. So hopefully we would be able to rank up some points by simply able to delivering the actual sandwich to the actual customer, so... Yeah, there's not much else to say, so either way, though, let's get the sync to it. There's also another version of this minigame, and during at some point later on throughout the whole game, which I'll show that off and during at some point, uh, probably on Friday, just because, well, if you couldn't tell already, today's day is, of course, uh, the 24th of August today, in this case in 2020. So in addition to able to actually just to realize that I've already mentioned this before about the fact that recently we've managed to get ourselves the next James Bond film that we've actually got, which appears to be uh, obviously the Spy Who Loved Me DVD, just because I found that film to be really cool. Even though, despite the fact that it was actually a little bit outdated these days, clearly it's because of how the fact that with the acting and stuff. But apart from those aside things though, I still quite enjoyed it, so... But that's the reason why I'm able to actually just to have it. In fact, well, I've recently managed to got that DVD right now. So yeah, you probably get the idea. And also, there's one thing I think uh, me and uh, Duffy has not mentioned about this. Well, to be more specifically, I've not mentioned about this before. And especially noticeable that Duffy has not even mentioned about it either. Um, during any forms of his Let's Play of Mario Party. Uh, basically, is the fact that we actually got ourselves our brand new Wii U game. Well, to be more specifically, uh, we have an old uh, kind of game for con some considerable time. I think the last time we actually got a brand new Wii U game was actually by the forms of... Uh, I would classify for saying Splatoon. It was the last uh, Wii U game that we've actually got since last time. But uh, the only game we actually did manage to got, however, though, is the physical release of New Super Luigi U. Now, you guys are probably thinking about the fact that isn't that necessary to be able to actually uh, buy the physical version of New Super Luigi U? Clearly, it's because of the fact that you got a digital uh, DLC version of it. Well, turns out, imagine if how the fact that if the Wii U's eShop uh, application were about to end, and if someone managed to able to actually no longer get themselves new Super Luigi U in a DLC thing on the eShop version of that specific stuff. And imagine if how the fact that if the Wii U eShop uh, application has been closed. And then if my Wii U somehow got screwed over by deleting some stuff automatically again. Then I would be able to actually not to worry about that. So... Ice on Ice. Uh, this minigame is so similar to the previous one that we've played, except the noticeable difference now, that uh, we have to use the uh, the nunchuck for this minigame, like use the control stick to move, and shake the Wii mode to push. You can't push if you are carrying the ice cream, so... And in fact, the matter is, though, is the fact that this time around, though, rather than just bringing the burgers to the customer, instead we have to bring in an ice cream to the customer. So it feels very similar, except the biggest difference is here is the fact that we have to deal with a lot of uh, opponents to deal with, and to top it all off is the fact that it's ice physics. So, yeah, just get used to that because you might as well be able to fell into the actual frozen pond a lot. Specifically because, as I said earlier, it's the fact that it's all ice-themed, so... And because with ice physics in mind, 
This means it's the fact that you weren't able to slip off a lot for the sake of the forms of this minigame, so... But yeah, the reason why I mentioned we managed able to go ourselves a uh, new Super Luigi U physical version, just for the sake of the collector's item, I suppose. And uh, because of that though, I would like to able to try that version now. Well, to be more specifically, whenever I w imagine if my uh, DLC thing was gone uh, during the downloadable version or something, I have no idea how do I even uh, try to be more precise with that stuff. Even though it doesn't really matter though, because either way though, that uh, I was originally trying to able to get myself uh, the Nintendo Selects version of New Super Mario Bros. U plus New Super Luigi U all in one. But the thing is though, is the fact that I'm not a big fan of uh, Nintendo Selects covers because it just managed to almost took over the actual box cover art. Which um, I think the only game we still managed to go with the Nintendo Selects lineup is of course The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. Even though nothing wrong about it, it's just that, well I'm just not a big fan of that particular cover gets in my way. Which, uh, to be honest, I really don't mind about the player's choice uh, labels in uh, the GameCube era. And um, I think that's clearly it's because of how the fact that sometimes that it might be seems out of... Well, I don't know how do I truly explain about this right now, so... But you know, you probably get the idea of how this goes, so... And I get the horrible feeling I'm probably not going to get the high score or something because, well... <clears throat> the time itself has almost run out, so... Yeah, it looks like I did get the high score, so... Oh well, I'll try again until one of my players on my own time though, but um, usually relatively speaking it's the fact that much like in uh... Although, to be more specifically though, it's the fact that unlike in Rayman Raving Rabbits, that um... <clears throat> excuse me, I've got something on my throat there, I do apologize for that. Uh, basically, um, unfortunately though, this won't be the 100% completion because certain minigames can get pretty tricky and difficult to able to achieve certain things, as you know. Anyway, so here we go with this next musical performance, and this one is Satisfaction. So even then though, I won't talk uh, over Journey Forms of the Background Music because again, it will contain a copyright issues or specifically, uh, specific amount of stuff as to be expected, which uh, to be honest with you is because of how the fact that, well, again, if the copyright strike managed to able to actually become a thing, then obviously we get screwed over, so. And there's also another thing that should be worth noting for this point too, I'm hoping, or in this case me and Devi are hoping anyway, that the, the official Nintendo Direct will be announced at some time this week, according to the forms of certain rumors before uh, Christmas uh, holiday season as on its approach, which um, as a result of that specific stuff though, I'm so desperate to able to actually see some more new games coming out for it. Well, I'm probably still not going to get Pikmin 3 Deluxe in my opinion, just because, well, unfortunately I'm Pikmin out just because of the give up uh, hype when it comes to the forms of still waiting and waiting and waiting. For Pikmin 4 to able to eventually announce for the Nintendo Switch, so as a result, I no longer have the first Pikmin 1 and first, uh, well, to be more specifically, Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2, both on the Wii, and also uh, Pikmin 3 on the Wii U. Although, despite that, however, though, is the fact that the only positive thing about the Switch version is the fact that you get DLC. Um, included in Journey in that particular game, which I think it actually makes it a little bit of a better satisfaction or something like that, but it's just the fact the matter is though, is that unfortunately I'm still Pikmin out. Especially noticeable with the, uh, Hey Pikmin as well, because it actually gives me some hand cramps every time when I play the game. Like, you know, kind of like the Kid Icarus Uprising Syndrome, like for instance that Although, don't get me wrong, I actually uh, like the presentation of uh, Kid Icarus Uprising. Like, the graphics on the 3DS looks absolutely gorgeous, and the soundtrack is magnificent as well. And even the, uh, the story is so good, and even especially noticeable with the actual... Uh, uh, the gameplay might actually be uh, the coolest things of the bunch. However, those just the controls just let me down so much. Even especially noticeable because I was expecting if they actually include uh, the dual analog controls, like for instance, if you have the Circle Pad Pro or something, 
then you weren't able to control the camera so easily, and even especially noticeable just move the cursor with the actual right analog stick or something, but sadly to tell you is the fact that you have to do a multitude of things, like use the Circle Pad Pro for move your character and use the stylus to control the cursor and the camera at the same time. I'm really hoping that will be the case on uh, I'm really hoping that Kid Icarus Uprising will get its uh, HD makeover in the uh, Nintendo Switch. And that way, if that usually becomes a thing, then I will be really, really excited for that particular remake. Or, to be more specifically, uh, the game for proper. Which, either way though, but then again, Sakurai is just concentrating on Super Smash Bros. as it is. Well, to be more specifically, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate recently, because obviously he wants to able to make you know, some more DLC characters and all that stuff, which still we've only got about uh, five DLC characters left until the actual game's roster will be finalized. And um, I really don't know if they may able to release the complete edition of uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at some point. But uh, we'll see what happens and journey forms in the future time comes, or to be more specifically, beyond. So... You know, you probably notice how this factor, or I have no idea why I'm truly saying that right now, just because, again, there's not much else we can talk about, so. Anyway, so that does it for satisfaction, and seems that we got in first place on the mini game, but not so much in the entire tour, just because, or the trip, I should say, just because, well, we're actually doing pretty okay. Well, not the best of the bunch, but it's okay. And of course, before we move on to the next shooting range uh, stage, uh, let's go and pick uh, the Captain Pirate Rabbit costume over here. And we can move on to the some of these mini games that we have not played yet in the actual Europe. So we've got three mini games left. So we played uh, these for the most part. Well, except for those three. So here we go with the Snake Chamber. And as far as I'm aware is the fact that we have to copy these certain notes uh, based off on that particular flute. So, yeah, play the flute as fast as possible. So press the A button, one, bu one button or two button, uh, two button according to what it's showing on the game. So that way you can play certain notes. Kind of think about it, this minigame reminds me of so much of uh, uh, the minigame from uh, Pac-Man Party. That uh, basically is like the same thing, except the fact that, well, I'm pretty sure in Pac-Man Party, that uh, basically you do have to worry about the, uh, you do have to rely on uh, two buttons specifically or something like that. Because in this particular game, you have to work on three buttons, so, yeah, that's how it goes basically. So, oh wow, we're actually doing pretty rough around the edges, I don't, I think. Again, I do apologize for the forms of that particular dialogue errors or something like that for that specific matter. Just because, well, I'm just gonna have to concentrate onto there. So, either way though, we'll just uh, go ahead and keep on pressing those corresponding buttons. And hopefully without... Ah, oh, really? Sometimes this minigame can be pretty tricky when you play with that position. With, uh, you know, with playing like a flute or something like that. Because, uh... Usually because of how the fact that I accidentally just pressed the wrong buttons. Mainly with the actual one button or the two button if you will. Just because, well I have no problems uh, pressing the A button. But the one and two buttons though, they are pretty tricky to press. Especially, what if you clearly see on screen. Then I know exactly what I'm doing. But, usually relatively speaking, unfortunately I didn't get the high score on that particular mini game. So... Oh well, we'll take second place again, so uh, I guess that makes it a little bit more, you know, sensical for that specific matter. Alright, I think we've only got about two minigames left in terms of uh, Europe, so let's go for uh, Little Chemist. Um, I'm not a big fan of this minigame though, clearly it's because of how the fact that, well, uh, depending on what uh, replayability of this minigame as far as I'm aware, uh, we have to, well, mix the correct potions, and, uh, basically we have to point at the bottle with the Wii Remote and hold the A button to, well, to hold it, and then when you hold down the A button, shake the Wii Remote to check the actual potion to see what that sign actually represents, and, um, 
Finally, pressing the B button will allow you to be able to deliver the potion to the rabbit, so... Not much else I can say about this minigame, so... Even though I said this before, I'm not a big fan of this minigame, honestly, just because, well... It might be a little bit too random sometimes, but no one near as much, I don't think, but... I don't know, we'll see what happens whenever we, uh... Play this minigame completely, so... Oh yeah, something's worth mentioning for this point too, is the fact that, yes, recently I managed to able to play myself, um, Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U recently, so that way I can able to actually just to hopefully try to able to complete that game, because that was one of those remaining 3D Mario games that we have left, in terms of 100% completion. However though, due to the forms of that particular Wii U save data corruptions sometimes, uh, that also means it's the fact that I have to restart the whole entire thing all over again, which, you know, it can be pretty amusing at points, so... And by the way, if you manage to give the wrong potion to your rapid right there, I believe you're able to lose points. And I think also is that these icons, three icons specifically, were able to actually just to shuffle around, so... Yeah, something's worth mentioning, so either way though, we'll, uh... Just keep on sending more potions, or, yeah, just potions in general, to that particular rabbit over there, so... Even though, despite the fact that I'm not exactly good at this, though, so... Nothing bad about it, it's just that this is the only minigame I'm not exactly good at. Uh, much like the, uh... Um... Uh, I don't know about you, but either way, though, that's how I can usually think about it, so... Alright, so, it looks like it... I think this is going to be a roughest run, I think. Well, at least we're hoping to try to get into third place, though, but... Either way, though, it really depending, really, because of how the fact that this is one of those minigames I'm not exactly good at, as I said earlier, so... But at least I could try, so either way, though, we'll, uh... Go ahead and send some... Okay, there we go. I think we're in third place at this point, so either way though, there's not much else to uh, worry about this too much. I think this is one of those mini games that's actually really difficult to get ourselves the uh, the first place position when it comes to achieving high schools or something, just because of how the fact that again I wasn't fast enough, and especially noticeable because of how the fact that sometimes potions layouts can get a little bit randomized every time when if you replay the mini game over and over again. But, uh, I just want to classify that, so... Yeah, that's, uh... <clears throat> little Chemist. And now let's move on to Photo Proof. And I do apologize for that particular throat problem right there, folks. Because, well... Not much else to say. So get the frame in time for the photo. And basically, we need to hold the Wii mode upright to rotate it to raise the seat. And then press the A button to lower the seat, so... That's as far as I can think about it. And I think we have to directly try to line it up from between the top to bottom. As far as I can recall. So, yeah, I think there are about like uh, three rounds in total. So, hopefully we'll try our best if we're able to actually just accomplish that, so... And yeah, I do apologize for that, um, awkward, uh, silence in terms of commentary and stuff, just because, well, I just like to watch some of these little cinematics and stuff. Um, I think it should be good. What, that's it? I thought it would be more than that. Okay, but unfortunately, I still haven't got in first place, so... Oh well, beggar sales can't be choosers. A little bit rough around the edges in terms of getting a high score in uh, Europe selections of mini games. Well, apart from the fact that we've only just managed to got only two of them, so if only if I could have done better if I was trying to able to be a little bit expertise around here. So, anyway, so let's move on to Paris. Uh, well, I don't know how do I explain this for this point, folks, but. Uh, because I must admit, though, is the fact that my pronunciation on the uh, uh, European stuff wasn't nearly as strong as I hoped. So we have Mon Armor. So basically, uh, it feels plays out very similar to the ones we've already done 
except the fact that biggest difference is now that it now just gonna take place in specifically I would say in Europe or to be more specifically in Paris in France so once again we have to go for the actual uh, the realistic setting as you can see right here so even though no, it might be sounds a little bit more uh, weird even though kind of thinking about it though is the fact that it always kind of reminds me of that particular Wii game that I've heard of, but I've never actually owned it for myself, and that appears to be Mad Dog McGree Gunslinger Pack, which, uh, that game involves around some sort of like a compilation of the, uh, the cool arcade games in the past, which is of course Mad Dog Games on the actual, uh, the Unreal's, uh, shooting games or something like that. Uh, because basically it's the fact that it takes place in a realistic, uh, uh, setting in uh, specifically in the Wild West uh, kind of theme and because of that though uh, basically we have to shoot as many of those uh, cowboys or even uh, gunslingers as possible and well it kind of reminds me of that honestly except the fact the biggest difference is from Mad Dog McCree gunslinger pack compared to this is the fact that obviously this uh, game does manage to able to not only managed to bring some of the footage from the real life setting, but it's also the fact that they're able to actually include the in-game models of uh, most of those rabbits themselves. And also it kind of reminds me of the AR stuff as well, specifically on the Nintendo 3DS most likely. Like for instance, that uh, you know, the Nintendo 3DS does manage to have themselves the AR um, augmented reality kind of stuff. And uh, usually because the, not only the 3DS system managed to have the AR stuff, but it's also uh, Tetris does manage to also has the actual AR stuff as well. And then let's not forget the Mario Party Island Tour did manage to contain the AR stuff, which even though technically they only get two mini games based off from that, although technically three if you want to count the, uh, well, both the single player and the multiplayer version of that particular Sinking Tower uh, mini game. And, uh, that's as far as I can get. Especially noticeable with how the fact that if I like to compare those, uh, to some parts like that. So either way though, we'll, uh, go ahead and move on to the next phase, or to be more specifically, that rabbit with the camera just somehow flashed it onto me. So either way though, we'll uh, get out to leave it to that. Alright, so let's go ahead and just keep on shooting some more rabbits. And hopefully trying to pull off some more combos in between. And look at that, I've got 20-20 despite I've got more points. Because, well, obviously since I've still got my combo on. Even though despite the fact that I no longer have my combos with me anymore. But that's okay, I suppose, just because, well, obviously, that, as, as far as I said this before, that I don't really think I can able to try to able to 100% through everything in terms of this game has to offer, so, again, I must admit, though, because of how the fact that certain mini games can get pretty tricky, I'm not gonna lie, in terms of trying to able to get those rewards, based off on well, how good the mini games are. Or to be more specifically, how how good you are in those certain mini games. So a good I'm pretty good at some of them, but unfortunately for most of them I'm not exactly good at. Like for instance, I'm still not good at uh, Little Chemist and also same applies to that uh Oh, what's another minigame I'm not very good at? Although there are some uh, minigames out there that we have not even come across into this point yet, which uh, we'll talk more about into it at some point, whenever we get on to uh, specifically. Uh, for the majority of the forms of the uploading schedule for this game, uh, it will be Mondays, well to be more specifically, uh, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, because as far as I'm aware, that uh, eventually for this week, for uh, Tuesday and Thursday, is that Sonic will definitely gonna finish up this let's play of um, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Mickey Me Bottom at some point in this week. And eventually, once that let's play is done, then um, sure enough, Daffy will still get back into Mario Party at some point in this weekend, especially as well. And let's not forget, by the forms of at some point in September. Uh, we can able to actually just be expect that Piglet will definitely coming back into um, his let's play of uh, Yoshi's Crafted World. Because, sure enough though, it has been about 
couple of months actually since uh, the last part of uh, Yoshi's Crafted World. Even though I haven't exactly counted that up yet. But um, eventually we might also do the new Let's Play as well. Even though we don't know exactly which one's which though. But uh, we'll do other let, uh, redo Let's Plays here and there as well. Like, uh, you know, as we established that before in the past, we will do our let's, uh, redo Let's Play of Super Monkey Ball 2 during at some point in, uh, sometime in November at some point. Even though originally we were going to do that on December, but that will be taken over by different games else. So, just want to classify that. And again, I do apologize for that uh, awkward silence there, just because, well, as far as the actual conversation goes, that's pretty much all I can say, just because, well, otherwise, though, is the fact that, well, everything else goes all got all right, except the fact that with the actual terrible pandemic is usually decided to conquer the world, which, as a result, it's just, it's just bad. Like, it's just awful. Anyway, so, um... I suppose there are some other things worth mentioning for is the fact that recently that uh, the Japanese release of the Sonic movie uh, in terms of the Blu-ray and DVD releases on that particular film uh, the Japanese version of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie Blu-ray release is going to be expected to be released until October 21st which uh, that might be about 10 days before Halloween and um, during that specific time is the fact that they're also going to be revealing a 4K version, if I'm presuming. And also the, uh, well, specifically the DVD version and the Blu-ray versions as well. So, and also they managed to get themselves a digital distribution and during at some point in September. For those of you who lived in Japan, then you know exactly, I don't know if you might able to actually hear me talking about this, just because... Again, I don't speak Japanese, unfortunately, just because I didn't exactly uh, look upon that much of Japan stuff, apart from a couple of exceptions, but that's how it goes, basically. So, either way, um, I guess not much else to talk about, so either way, though, that's all I can really say about this, so... Oh okay, yeah, I suppose another thing I should probably talk about this as well, uh, before this, uh, uh, before this part will be finished. Uh, basically, if you ever pre-order Pikmin 3 Deluxe on the Nintendo U UK store, uh, you were able to get yourselves a very cool, uh, pre-order bonus, which appears to be by the forms of a Micro Viper Cloth, which to be expected if you're able to try to clean your Nintendo Switch screen as possible. And there's also the, uh, the Coffee to Go, uh, kind of cup, so that way you can able to actually drink coffee in that particular cup if you want. But, um, honestly, I don't know if I can able to actually order that particular stuff, I'm afraid, just because... Well, you know what I mean, I'm exactly Pikmin out, so... Oh, it does say to be continued. Gee, I wonder why it says that. But I guess we should probably talk more about it and during that some point in next Monday. Just because this Let's Play is going to be significantly shorter compared to the original game for sure. But we'll discuss more on that later. So I guess we should probably end things off here. So join me next time on Let's Play Rayman Raving Rabbits 2. It's the fact that we are about to be moving on to the next trip which appears to be asia like japan china or anything so i'll see you guys until our wednesday later fellas